Hey guys, this is Tom Box. Thanks for tuning into MST.TV. In today's video on Master Duel, we're going to be covering the long promised video of the best rares and commons that you can craft as generic fillers for your deck. I spent hours looking through the entire card pool of rares and commons to give you guys this list of 30 cards, 10 in each category of monsters, spells, and traps. Some of these cards can be used as temporary replacements to the ultra rares that you don't have just yet, so you still need to fill your deck up to 40. This is what this is good for. You can also craft a bunch of these cards together to make a free to play deck to grind through solo mode so you can grab all the gems available because you haven't decided on which deck you want to play. And finally, you can even use them in ranked play because some of these cards they're just rares, but they're also really, really good, and you can even use them competitively. If that's what you guys are here for, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button for me. I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe and ding that notification bell, because next time we're going to be covering the top 10 decks. I'd rather just talk about it. Why don't we learn how to break it? We're going to teach you guys how to read the board, as well as break it apart. If that's what you like, make sure you guys hit subscribe. And let's get to it. Monster number one, we have Danger Thunderbird. Just a quick note here, a lot of the monsters on this list are going to be from various archetypes. And regardless of that, as long as they're not being played in an archetype specific way, I'm going to include it and they're basically considered as splashable. And speaking of splashable, Danger Thunderbird is one of those monsters that are no strangers just being splashed because you can splash this in blue eyes, like any level eight deck, you can use this card because it's a level eight. And not only that, it's also very, very big. And uh, 2800 attack using the danger mechanic and quite easily summon out this card and just wreak havoc. 2800, you're already a third of the way there of taking out your opponents. And even if you do end up discarding this through the danger effect, you get to pop a set card. This card is fantastic. And that's why you have another danger on this list. Monster number two, Danger Dogman. As a common, this is a 400 points short of a Danger Thunderbird, but still, even if you discard this card, you can weaken the entire board on your opponent's side by 1,000 attack. That can make it pretty easy to swing over, especially if you're gonna be playing a lot of beat sticks. And of course, it has the same danger summoning condition. If you try to discard the card in your hand and you miss, you get to summon out this card and uh, you get to draw a card to replenish so you get to replace the card that you threw out that's why dangers are very very good and these are only the two biggest ones i would say that are common and rare now monster number three we're moving into the mech knight realm and number four is also another mech knight but these are also again big beat sticks that you can just special summon out for free now if you're going first you're very unlikely to special summon out this particular one because mech knights require two cards in the same column and you get to summon a monster into the monster zone of that column as long as there's two cards and uh, two cards usually require your opponent to set up a card for you so typically going second these are much more effective especially when you got to align your spells and traps to your opponent's monster giving you a free 24 100 attacker and you can even move it aside for the next monster monster number four mech knight red moon so just 100 attack stat smaller but it does have a bigger defense usually you're not going to care about the defense for these guys you just want to swing in as fast as possible just finish the game so you can grab those gems that's why this is here but in addition i guess if you do lose one of your mech knights say you accidentally discarded it with the danger stuff this card can banish it and pop a face-up monster in the same column. Remember, Mech Knights are column-based after all. If your Indigo Eclipse moves the side and you have this card in your hand, you get to summon out both, dishing out over 4,000 damage very, very quickly. Monster number five, I promise you guys this is the last beat stick on this list. However, I use this more as a utility card to take out Sky Striker. If you have problems against Sky Strikers that are up at the top tier, then summon a Cyber Dragon. They might have forgotten that all of their Link monsters, they're considered as machines and being a machine, you can send them to the graveyard simply by having a Cyber Dragon on the field and a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon that just so happens to be a rare so if you play both of them you can clear out your opponent's sky striker monster and that will not allow the ray in the graveyard to trigger because that's technically not a monster effect that it's sent to the graveyard it's the summoning condition of the fortress dragon that's why this one is also here monster number six is going to be Gadarla, the mystery dust kaiju if you have a problem against big herald monsters monsters that are unaffected by everything it just works against a lot of the problems and consider using this over the imperm you can break the board using this whereas imperm in your hand or imperm that's ineffective will not be as good i consider using these if you're going to be going second i'd rather have this over an imperm any day because this this hurts i mean you get rid of held of ultimate the barrier statue or rather get rid of the thing that can react to you then you can kill the barrier statue you can even kill the final arrival cybers which is unaffected by everything 
and even Sky Striker have a problem with eating a kaiju because their entire back row gets turned off. Consider putting this in instead of the Imperm. That's just my suggestion. Monster number 7 and 8 are both from 10 Yi's, and 10 Yi's, as long as you're not controlling any effect monster, you can special summon them out. So, aside from having a very good special summoning condition, you also have their effect. If you're controlling a vanilla monster, which Vishuda can link down into a Monk of the 10 Yi, and if you go to the Monk of the 10 Yi, now you control the vanilla, you can use their actual effect. For Vishuda, you get to balance anything on your opponent's side of the field that can be targeted back into their hand. And that just paves the way for an OTK, paves the way to, of like getting rid of all the problems. It's really good, as long as it can be targeted. Monster number eight, Tenyi Spirit Adhara. Even if Vishuda wasn't number seven, Adhara would still make it because it is one of the freest tuners that you can special summon from your hand. And that's a very little commitment required to go into Christian Hockey Fibrax. If Vishuda was there, you can play Synchros and you can Synchro into an eight. And I think there's just a lot going for this card because everything about it is just really good. You special summon it, you can even use it as Tribute Fodder. So in terms of like utility monster, you just need a body or a level one. This is one of your quickest go-tos. Monster number nine, we can look at Parallel Xyz. As long as you're playing any form of linking, this card will summon itself from your hand onto the link arrow that is available and then summon another copy of itself from the deck. That gives you a lot of monsters that you can play for linking up or you can even just overlay the two because they're now two fours. They change their level of their special summon and now you have a free rank four. This card is really good if you play any form of links. So just give it a try if you need to fill some space. And monster number 10 is just a free starter of junk forward it's very easily searchable you can search it with rhoda it's a warrior it doesn't activate when it summons itself out it's level three which works with rank three base decks as an awesome starter and if you just leave it on the board it can still be used as link material tribute material there's just no restriction about this card it's just dump a free monster onto the field and let your opponent think about whether or not i can extend even further and that's why this is one of the more ideal starters and it's even played in regular tcg today in phantom knights Okay, now we move on to spell cards. We have Forbidden Chalice as our spot number one. If you don't have a negator just yet, make this. You don't have your Imperm, your Droplet, or your Veiler. Make Chalice and then save your gems or whatever your crafting points for the big one that you need to replace Chalice with. Chalice is just good in general. Even in TCG, we play it because of its flexible timing because it has the most flexible timing, in my opinion, for very low cost. Unlike Droplet, Droplet, you have to send cards to the graveyard. This can turn off like Dark Law, you can turn off someone's Floodgate monster, turn off a Winda. It's very good. The only problem with this card is it does target, which means anything behind this Simorg is going to be problematic. Aside from that, it is still a very, very good card. Next, we have Swords of Concealing Light to Mass Book of Mooning Effect. And this card is also not hard once per turn, which makes it fantastic to break apart the Tri Brigade board because if they don't have Apex Avian, you can book everything face down. Now you can continue your play with uh, zero to no threats on the field. Yeah, it's funny enough. As long as you can bait an Apex Avian along those lines, it's, it's good enough. But this only has specific matchup uses, but good enough i suppose especially at the top where if, as long as their board is not made up of link monsters everything can be flipped face down and therefore uh the threats are removed their negations are gone you can play through your opponent card number three is mst.tv that is not what my channel stands for by the way uh but this card you probably already have three copies of it from the structure deck that you got to start the game so if you started with the synchros you probably already have three copies of this it's just generic spell trap removal there's not much more to add Card number four is going to be Book of Moon. It's very, very useful for removing some of the lingering effects on the field, such as Winda, like the Summon Logs. Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds, if it's targetable, you can flip it face down so that their effects get turned off. A lot of the field locks, I think Book of Moon is one of the better ways to actually clear out some of these problems. But aside from that, you can use it a little bit more aggressively just to take away your opponent's opportunity to make an Xyz, a Link, a Synchro, because without stat lines, you can't use those monsters and you can't overlay on top of them spell card number five pianissimo a much more defensive option here that protects your monster from being destroyed by battle or card effect and can be activated during the damage check because it does have attack modulation in the text i think it's a pretty decent choice if you want to keep some of your monster alive especially when someone has outed your big boss monster negated it and they're about to run it over you chain pianissimo 
is stuck on the field. You take a little bit of extra damage, but it's fine. Or you put it into defense position, and now you take no damage, and your cards are still very much alive. So card number six, we're going to Moon Mirror Shield, one of the only equips I have here. I guess there's a lot of better equips as well, in general, you have DDR and a lot of fun ones. But if you want to win all your battles, then Moon Mirror Shield is the one that will always have 100 points higher than your opponent's highest stat. So defense-wise, if their high defense is high, you'll be like 100 higher than their defense. If their attack is higher, then they'll be 100 higher than their attack. You always win every battle. Plug this onto like a Floodgate-esque monster and now they have a big problem. Now they have to clear the Moon Mirror Shield before they even get a chance to even have a chance to fight you. And yeah, it's, uh, that's how it is. You can even equip this to a Fossil Dyna and uh, have a little bit of fun against them. Spell card number seven, Enemy Controller. Ideally, you don't use the changing battle position effect because that's not going to be relevant especially to link monsters but instead use it to steal your opponent's monster and then re-engage that monster against them or even use it as link material because then if you use a one monster take a link two now you have double the amount of monsters available to make a bigger link play i think that's how we should be using this but you know there's the utility is versatile spell card number eight one of our favorite floodgates d fissure we're going to the weird obscure stuff but since d fissure is a three on master duel if you you want to shout out anyone's graveyard synergy this is the one card to do it and it is very mean spell card number nine is going to be perform pop pop up who said there was no rare draw cards there's a draw card right here you can drop to three cards because you can send up to that many cards to the graveyard and you're gonna have to pay a very steep life point cost if your hand size is too large if you're not playing perform upon monsters pendulum monsters that are magician named or odd eyes monsters you're gonna be paying 1000 life points for every card in your hand that's potentially 5,000 life points typically you'll probably lose about 3,000 it could be worth it as long as you can get game you can draw that many cards who cares right and spell card number 10 it's chain energy well i kind of threw this one in here because it's like old classic that adds cost to every single card you play in your hand but what i'm really trying to say is there's just so many good rare spell cards that are archetype specific that you probably won't get to the point of even get to this card. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. But this is a classic that I really like. Putting three copies of this face up on the field makes it pretty annoying for your opponent to play because every card that they are going to play now is going to cost them 1500 life points. And two cards is 3000, four cards is 6000. They can play a total of five cards if you will know what I'm saying. If we put three copies of this, I don't know, it was really annoying back in the day. This is just something that just to remember, a nostalgic card. And finally, we've made it to trap cards. The rare and common lines of trap cards are actually really strong, especially in terms of generics. Number one, we have Torrential Tribute. This is the mass board wipe that we've known for a very long time, and you can play three copies of this in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, so why not play it? It is still very strong. People need a lot of monster to build up their links, their XCs, their synchros. There's always an opportunity for you to use Torrential Tribute if you went first and set this card up early. And that's why this is definitely among the top spot for me in terms of trap cards. Trap card number two is going to be Needle Ceiling. And it is another mass board wipe like Torrential Tribute, except that the condition is there must be four or more monster on the field. Luckily, there's no trigger on the summon, so you can just do it as long as the condition is met. It only pops face up stuff, but it's good enough to take care of people building up their board for big link summons, big C summons. Everything works for you. You can just wipe their board before they get to the end goal, and that's the point of this card. Trap card number three, we have Compulsory Evacuation Device, a classic from back in the day. Although back in the day, it was still very useful to bounce something back into the hand. Ideally, nowadays, you hit an extra deck monster, put them back into the extra deck, so they don't even get the cards back. So if they use four materials to make one monster, then you bounce that one monster. It's like you cleared four cards for one, and that's how you make, you know, advantageous trades with simple cards like these one for ones. Card number four, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, another spot removal. This one can remove spells and traps as well. It just is a good way to clear out some of the problems. Although it does have a one card discard, it is a non-destructive removal, which is why I appreciate the card. And uh, since there's a lot of stuff that protects from being destroyed, spinning it back to the top of the deck is uh, one of the better ways to clear out some problems. Trap card number five, we have Paleozoic Dynamiscus. This is another spot removal. This one removes a face up card on the field by targeting it and you get to banish that card. It's very, very useful and very versatile to take care of a lot of the problems, especially stuff that can't be destroyed and stuff you don't want your opponent to top deck again. So this is one of those options. Trap card number six, Floodgate Trap Hole. 
Now, unlike most other trap holes that destroy the monster, this one leaves it on the field, but it flips it face down. The best part about it is their opponent cannot change its battle position. So it's stuck like that. If they play any sort of links or exceeds or synchros, they can't use any of those options. The only best way for them to clear it is they either play tribute summons or they fuse it off. Everything else will not work. So this is just gonna be a clog on the board until you clear it out yourself. And uh, if you don't need to, then you just leave it there. Trap cards 7, 8, and 9 are all negation-based trap cards that negate the effects of your opponent's monsters. So number 7, we have Fiendish Chain. This is one of the earliest rendition of a effect negator. And this one is permanent as long as it can stay attached to your opponent. And your opponent also cannot attack with that monster. So this is a pretty basic one. And the next one, number 8, Phantom Knight's Fogblade. This card, very similar to Fiendish Chain, also like does not allow the monster to attack. But on top of that, you can't target that monster for an attack. But there is a way to kind of circumvent that. The detail is you declare the attack first, then you chain Fogblade onto their monster. Since you already declared the attack, your attack will still continue to go through. That's in a long story short. That's how you use it to negate the effect and attack that monster. But you have to control the timing very carefully. Otherwise, the two cards are fairly similar. You can even target one of your own cards to prevent your opponent from targeting it for attack as well but you'll have to turn off your own effects. That's a little bit of a trade-off, but this card is a little bit more flexible. Trap card number nine is gonna be Lost Win. Unlike the other two trap cards that negate monster effects, this one is a regular trap card instead of being a continuous. The negation is permanent, but you can only target special summoned monsters. And it also has that monster attack permanently until something else changes the modifier or removes the modifier. But otherwise it's permanent and it goes to the graveyard. But if your opponent does special summon out a monster, this card can activate in the graveyard and reset itself on the field. But after that, when you activate it again, it will be banished. Then trap card number 10, we have World Legacy Secrets. This is to tie it in with the monsters we mentioned earlier, such as the Mech Knights, but on top of the Mech Knights, this card can special summon any level five or higher monster in the graveyard. But if you do have a Mech Knight on the field or Mech Knight in the graveyard, summon that Mech Knight into the same column as your opponent's monster to use as a negation. But the reason why I mentioned this particular card here is because this is the one card that can tie in all those monsters mentioned earlier into one whole deck. Because if all the dangers somehow ditches into the graveyard, you can revive those dangers with these, this card because it summons anything that's level five or higher. I think that's just really, really strong and has good synergy, even as a deck that's just only built of just rares and commons. So in that regard, that's why this is here. This is like a monster reborn, but it also acts as a negation. Pair this with Indigo Eclipse, you just shift it left and right, you can start turning off effects just non-stop because it's a, it's a continuous effect, you just move into the column and it's just an easy GG right there. Anyways, this is a really good card, I don't get why it was uh, common, but I had to put it in here because it is definitely one of the better ones out there. And that's all I got for this video guys, if you guys enjoyed this video covering the top 10 monster spells and traps in the common and rare variety, well smash that thumbs up button for me. If you guys want to see more stuff from MST.TV, hit the subscribe button and ding that notification bell. I'm going to teach you guys how to clap every single top deck available. Get to plat one super easy. I know there's going to be new ranks available. I don't even know from the leaks, I think there's going to be like common and rare only duels. I'm very curious to see how that's going to play out. Maybe this list will help you build some stuff from there. Just remember it in the back of your head and I guess I'll see